Amen. Amen. Well, I got a text from Zion, one of my boys, uh, this week, just a couple days ago, actually, letting me know that the great prophet Luke Combs just dropped an album. And I don't know if you guys know about Luke Combs. We're my country fans, by the way. Just raise your hand. Wow. Okay. Um, I loathed country music for years. I'm sorry. I'm just telling you. And then my sons converted me. Well, partly. They, they introduced me to Luke Combs. I'm just going to tell you right now, this dude is anointed. I, I mean, I, probably, I don't know. I probably shouldn't say that as a preacher, but I'm just telling you, when I read his lyrics, I'm like, oh my goodness. And so this, this, this album that he wrote, it's called Father and Sons. And he has uh, two boys, I think it's two years and younger. And he's talking about, he writes all of these songs. And so my son sends it to me a couple days ago. He's like, Dad, did you see Big, you know, Big Luke dropped this album? And I, I wasn't prepared for what was on the other side of these, these songs. And it, by the way, dads, if you want a good cry, just, man, grab a bunch of tissues, download out of YouTube or whatever, get in your car and just start driving. I didn't know that. And so I started listening. And I don't know if it's like being an empty nester. I don't know if it was like the man period that time on the month. I mean, I don't... <laughs> I don't know, like, I, midlife crisis. I'm not quite sure what was happening, but man, I was just, just undone. And my wife is kind of looking at me like, bro, like, you gonna be good? Like, but, I mean, banger after banger. He, he's just, they're just coming out. There, there was a couple of them, um, front door famous. Oh my goodness, this one talked about when, you know, when, when you come in the door as a dad and your kids just run up to you. I mean, I bet you get it, right? And you're just like, you're the hero. You're, you know, and he was talking about the difference between being famous out the world, but when he comes home and his, and his little boys come up to him and just give him that big hug, dads, come on, where my dad's at? Is there any, do you, I mean, that's what you live for right there. There's nothing greater in the universe. And then he talks about in case I ain't around. Oh, golly. And I had a friend who passed away suddenly this week and I was thinking, he has young kids, and I was thinking about, he was talking about, hey, I plan to be here, but in case I ain't around, I'm trying to prepare you for the future. And he starts writing these lyrics, and I'm like, oh, golly, just ruined. And then hunting by yourself, oh my goodness, hunting by yourself. He talks about how his little boy, like, he talks too much, he talks too much, you know, and he's, talk too, he's too loud, he talks too much. You know, scaring all the animals away. And he's like, I don't, I don't care, man, like, because one day I'm going to be hunting by myself. I was like, <laughs> now, I'm, I don't hunt, I don't fish, I like bake cakes and like vacuum lines and stuff, but I will go fishing with Zion and, and Blaze. I will not shoot anything. I shot a rabbit one time, it started squealing, and I was like, never again, never again. Sorry, I'm not a man. I'm kind of, a little bit, in event. Okay, but number one, I'm, I'm so sorry, but the number one song, okay, you guys ready? And this is your homework. You have a home, every one of you guys have homework. It's called Plant a Seed. And, I, and I'm sorry, but I have to sing it. So bear with me. And they might have the lyrics up here so y'all can sing with me. If you, by the way, who has listened to Plant a Seed by Luke Combs yet? Okay, only you guys can sing with me because you know how it goes. Everybody else will do it. And we're gonna skip all the way to verse two. The team, I wrote the whole song, and I'm like, we're gonna sing, and they're like, dude, that's not gonna work. Okay, so we're just gonna do verse two. True love and the gospel <laughs> might take a while to blossom, but you dig down in that garden and you plant them anyways. Come on, you guys gotta sing with me that know it. Just let God be the farmer. He's got the sun and water. It's up to him to see, let them bloom and let them see the light of day. And here's where it bangs, right here, the chorus. Oh, time ain't always your friend. It starts slow, gets faster toward the end. So fill up your heart with love. Pass it on before you go. Oh, golly, this hit me. And thank the man upstairs that you were there to plant a seed and watch it grow.
Now, y'all are like, can you teach the Bible? I didn't come for a comedy show, all this entertainment. I'm just, hey, by the way, the joy of the Lord is your strength, by the way. Some of y'all just need to come to church and laugh a little bit and then get back into the world. Okay. But here's what I'll tell you, man. When I was, when I was weeping and my wife thought I lost my mind when I was listening to these songs, it, it, here's, here's the crazy thing. When I was preparing for this message before Zion even sent it to me, I was wondering why the father-kid relationship hits every human so deep. It does not, I don't care who you are, what human you are on the planet, the relationship with your dad hits you deep in your soul, whether you want it to or not. And now some of y'all have a father's wound and, and you were abused, you were neglected or something happened and, be, and until you deal with that wound, you'll never move forward in life. So I pray God's grace over your life. I pray that you would just call and forgive whatever they have done, do something because if not, it'll infect your soul deep in your heart and you'll never move forward. You'll stay stuck in your life. I don't know why I just told you that, but that's key. But here's what I was thinking. I was like, why, why is it so deep? And here's what I think. I think it's pre-programmed in human beings for us to have a deep, meaningful relationship with God the Father deep in our soul from the very beginning. And now when I listen to these songs and why I cry like a baby, I'm like, dude, not only Blaze and Zion and now and, and, and Taylor and Maya, who will be October 11th, my second daughter. How about that? Come on, somebody. And all the other people, it's like, it's like, dang, dude, something's deep in my heart. What is that? Is it any dads right here? Are y'all with me? Or I get excited about this stuff. You, it, gets, it gets deep in your heart. Listen, you, you might come here to church right now, and this is like the first or second time. You're like, I don't know about God and stuff. But, but something hits you deep when you look at your kids. And even some of the regret that you have of, of what you didn't do for your kids, that also hits you deep. Why is that? There's a connection between our relationship with God the Father. It's all connected. It's all connected. And so, if you go, Todd, just relax a little bit. Okay, I'll try to. For my new, new time, newcomers, sorry. Just let me, I have so much to share and I'm trying to, to get it all packaged together. Let me just say this real quick. If you wanna change the world, some of us are looking to the next president and policy and, and all this different stuff. And hey, man, I'm with y'all. Like, I, I, I want us to have a God-honoring place. And I, I, I'm telling you, man, go vote and go vote biblically. And we have a lot of attack coming at us in our, in our culture. And I would say, man, let the Holy Spirit guide and the word of God like, like guide your voting and let's do this. But let me just tell you and make no mistake about it. You know how we're gonna change the world? It's dads. It, it is papas, it is padres. It's not necessary policy, it's papas. When the papa gets with the papa, <laughs> not the papa, the papa, what happens is something changes. And, and now we give it away to our kids. And now our kids see something different and they see humility and consistency and grace and unconditional love and honor. And what happens now, that replicates through a culture and it changes the culture. Until that happens, we will not see anything different in our, in our country today. I firmly believe that. Golly. I, I miss y'all. Maybe that's why I get all excited. So here's what I'm gonna do for the next 25 minutes. You got 25 minutes to spare? Anybody? I'm just gonna give you three keys that I've learned. The power of raising children in our culture as a dad and jot them down. I'm out of breath. I might need more cardio, Cap. <laughs> Jot it down. If you're, if you're a dad in here or a mom, write it down because this applies to you. Number one, the biggest key as you change the world as a parent, as a dad, is your example. Just jot it down. And I'll get into it. You ever hear the saying like, do as I say, not as I? That's doo-doo. That's what it is. It doesn't work. They will do what you do, straight up. Number two, I want you to write this down, encourage. Your kids are already fighting an uphill battle in our culture today. They don't need more discouragement, dad. 
they need to be what? Encouraged. Encouraged. And finally, number three, jot it down, empower. <laughs> I see a lot of entitled kids. I don't see a whole lot of empowered kids. And I'm just gonna tell you, pro tip, because I might miss it in my notes. If you're a dad in here, don't wake up your kid or let your wife wake up your kid. Have them set their own alarm and tell them to get in the kitchen to serve at a specific time. Do not get them up. Do, listen, empower them. Don't entitle them. You got some whiners? We're, parents, you got some whiners in your house? We don't whine. We don't whine. Empower your kid to make a choice, the power of choice. You can whine if you want, but you're not gonna get that. In fact, you might get something else. It's called the rod of discipline. It's up to you. It's up to you. This is a phrase, it's up to you. Everybody say it. It's up to you. It's up to you. It's power of choice. Okay, all right. Let's start with example. This hit me, jot it down. That's why we wanna start in John 5, 19. Listen to this. Jesus explains, so in the context of this, he was healing on the Sabbath, and uh, he, he, he actually makes the connection with him and his heavenly father, and the Pharisees are tripping because they're like, dude, if you're saying he's your dad, that's making you equal with him, and Jesus is like, yeah, bro, that's kind of the idea here. So Jesus explained in verse 19, this hit me, I tell you the truth, the son can do nothing by himself. He does, what's it, what does he do? He does only what he sees his father doing. I tell you the truth, the son can do nothing by himself. Watch this, he does only what he sees the father doing. And then the last verse says this, whatever the father does, the son also does. That is so good. Look at me, dads, look at me, dads. What you say matters. What you do matters much more. I learned this years ago. We were serving at the church down in Fort Lauderdale. Pastor Mike, can you grab me that, uh, that towel, by the way, please, sir? Thanks. By the way, how about an amazing dad, Michael O'Connell, right here in the front row. Thanks, Mike. I was reminded of this. Years ago, we, we stayed at this condo and it had this like Olympic-sized pool right by it. And uh, on Tuesdays, my day off, we would send it in the pool. Like dad's in the best when like they're standing on your shoulders and you're chucking them through. I mean, I just used to chuck the kids like all day long. It was so fun. And, uh, but eventually the, the, the fun would have to end and we'd have to dry off. And so one day I remember, I mean, it just ingrained in your mind and I got, and I was, you know, just drying off, doing the whole deal, you know, drying off the body. And then, dudes, you do the, I don't know if you do the, the whole deal. Yeah. I don't know why it's taking so long to do this, sorry. Right, I mean, where are my guys at? Is this how, like, and then you walk out, and your wife's like, dude, are you trying to flex? Like, what are you, what are you doing? So I'll never forget, because I did this, I didn't think about it, it wasn't like I was like, this is how you dry off, this is how you get every, I just did it. And then I looked behind, and there was a little blaze. And little blaze, I, 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 you know how you have like the 10 second clips in your mind, old, old guys? I have the 10 second clip at, at the pool, at the condo, and here's, here's what he's doing. And it hit me. <laughs> Thanks, Mike. I could say a bunch, but what I do, he's gonna do. As the son sees his father doing, that's what he's going to do. And that is huge. Simply put, our kids are a product of the pattern that we sent as parents. So let me ask you a couple of questions, okay? How do your kids talk? How do my kids talk? Oh my goodness. How do they walk? What do they do? If I'm really honest with you, 
there are some things that my kids do that I'm like, oh my goodness, like how did they get that? And then I'm like, oh. There's some things I'm proud of. There's some things that make me, I'm like, oh man. I'll be perfectly honest with you. One of the things that um, I have like the gift of, uh, what do you call it? Um, making jokes or uh, 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 gab, but it, no, it's, um, th- thank you. Who, who said that? Who, thank you for bailing me out, Dwayne. I appreciate that. It's uh, sarcasm. So sarcasm can be fun. But if I'm really honest with you, there's times where I'm sarcastic to my wife. Shout out to my wife, by the way. I love you, babe. But there's something about um, when I'm sarcastic to my wife in maybe a, like a derogatory or demeaning, disrespectful type way that I'm not really proud. In fact, it's probably one of my, my big regrets of raising the kids. Because why? When, when, when they see that, what do they, they do that. And to this day, I'll kind of catch them and be like, yo, that was a little disrespectful. And then I'm kind of like, oh, that's, that's on me. It's on me. Um, I was thinking about this whole idea of, of the pattern. How many like templates, by the way? <laughs> Do you like templates? Like having a template, like, so you don't have to come up with the whole idea. They'll kind of give you the outline and then you can kind of fill it in. I, I want you to write this down if you're a dad. Um, Listen, you as a dad are a temp, who are my toddler parents real quick, okay? Toddler, listen, you're a toddler, or excuse me, you're a template to your toddler. You are the pattern that they're, you're the shell, and they'll kind of be their own person, but listen, it, you're the template. I'm the template. How many teen dads, we're my teen dads. I'm gonna pray, let's actually, let's pray, pray okay, <laughs> right now. See, I see <laughs> No, I'm messing with you. Y'all teens are awesome, man. Some of the teens I've been meeting with lately, they love Jesus, man. They're like, I don't, all this darkness, and all this chaos, everybody trying to chase all this kind of stuff. I'm chasing Jesus, man. I have a, I have a, I have a template. And, and there's a lot of dads. Yeah, it's true. There's a lot of dads that are templates for their teens right now. And I know some dads that used to be a template. And they're like, oh, dang. But now they've, re, they've come back to Christ and now the template they're modeling for their teens is something miraculous. And then you see the fruit of it over time. So I wanna commend, uh, let's give it up for the dads that no matter what you're going through, you're, you're, you're setting a template for your toddlers and your teens. I, I was thinking about this. What would it look like, man, dads, if we loved our wives like Christ loved the church and gave himself for her? We were more tender, we were, we were more thoughtful. God knows I need that. But just imagine, if we, if we listen, w- what if we stayed faithful to our wives to the very end? And that's what your kids saw. Or if you fumbled the biscuit, but you got back on and then you stayed faithful. Like there's, there's grace, there, there's mercy. I was thinking about this, um, a Christ-like pattern as papas, the first words that came to me, number one, was consistency. <laughs> I, I, was, I mentioned my stepdad, John, and my, my dad, Skip. I mean, um, my father-in-law, Harold, a lot of my father figures, uh, one of my key mentors of my life, Doc Greenwald, it's consistency. These dudes are consistent. <laughs> I used to work with uh, John when we started the, the church. They had a book business, and so we would travel to different hospitals and different places and, and set up books and we would slang books all day. And then I would slang the word on the weekend. You know, that's, thank you for giving me that opportunity, by the way. And <laughs> Joach was the most consistent dude. I call him Joach, sorry. But he, like, he did the same exact thing. Like, if I don't put my keys in that, right, I'll lose them. Like, that's what he would tell me. But, but, but I'm, I saw consistency, consistency. I think about my dad and my dad, um, Skip, who's in Florida, not sure if he's watching, but shout out, Big Skip. I talked to him this morning and uh, <laughs> one of the things, talk about consistency, he would go to the same Amoco gas station every morning and fuel up and get a little coffee and he knew the person's name, he knew what was going on in their life and, and I just saw a model of consistency, of caring for people and he didn't know a stranger. The most gregarious guy I know. I don't know where I got it, but, I, but I, I, what was it? It was an example. Consistency. Number two, a pattern of humility. 
I'll tell you what, dads, right now, one of my favorite things about Mike O'Connell, Kappas Chatfield, Matt Jackson, Kevin Bailey, Ben Norvig, Pastor Fun, Ben Norvig. How about Ben Norvig's word last week? My goodness, Ben. I just think about all the leaders that I'm surrounded by, the humility that I see blows me away. And then generosity, write that down. That, boy, I tell you what, especially you guys that have the gift to give, but man, just a generous life, not just with your resources, but your, your time, the, the generous life, servant leadership at home, specifically at home, but also around town. Dads, can you say to your kids, like Paul said to the church in Corinth, jot this down, 1 Corinthians 11, 1, I love it, and you should imitate me just as I imitate Christ. There's another translation, follow me as I follow Christ. I'm gonna tell you the most powerful tool to prepare to be a dad is to be with your dad, to be with your heavenly father every single day is powerful. What pattern, what picture are we giving our kids? I was reading in our secondary uh, reading in Deuteronomy. How many have been joined Deuteronomy, by the way? If you've never read Deuteronomy, I know it's in your secondary reading, it's your bonus reading, but I challenge you, man, like, like get it. Deuteronomy 5, this, this hit me, listen to this, this is very sobering. This is the good and the bad, all in one, when it comes to setting a pattern for our kids. Deuteronomy 5, starting in the second half of nine. Listen to this, this is, this is sobering. I lay the sins of the parents upon their children. The entire family is affected. Even children in the third and fourth generations of those who reject me. So I'm just gonna say, if you and I as men reject God, it's not just about you. Let that sit in. I, I, got a, I, I came to bring a little bit sober, sober word as well. Because you and I, one of the greatest gifts and the greatest curses all at the same time that God gave us is free choice. So when you and I as dads, when we reject God, it doesn't just ruin your life, it, it affects the second and third and fourth generation. But I got good news. You ready for some good news? Yeah. I love God. <laughs> but look at verse 10. Everybody say but. but. I need a big but. Everybody say but. but. Oh, I love it. But I lavish Oh, I lavish unfailing love for a thousand generations on those who love me and obey my commands. Oh my goodness. Did you just hear that? Did you just hear that? He, he just said, dude, it's not gonna go good on two, three, four generations. But if I turn to God, and some of y'all men, God brought you to church today to say enough is enough. I'm not gonna do it on my own anymore. I'm gonna submit to the sovereignty of my heavenly father and change generations. Because it just said, what did it just say? A thousand generations. Talk about the grace of God. I'm so grateful for the grace of God in my life. I, dude, I got things I'm still fumbling through as your pastor. Things that I, you know, Paul said, the things I wanna do, I don't do. The things I don't wanna do, dang it, I end up doing. Sometimes my prayer life is, God, I just wanna be, like, everything's perfect, and I'm just rolling, and sometimes he's like, hey, but then you'll start get prideful, and you'll get legalistic, and you won't actually be the preacher I'm asking for that is filled with grace. And I'm like, dang, that stinks. He's like, one day you'll be perfect when you get to me in heaven. Oh. Okay, last thing on this, and then we'll move to the number two, is this. One of the favorite books beside the Bible that I'm reading, actually that we just, we just read, is a, is a book that I encourage you to check out by John Mark Comer, one of my, my favorite authors. It's called Practicing the Way. We're, we're taking our pastors through it right now. And John Mark Comer talks about you and I as disciples, we apprentice under the leadership of Jesus. So he's the master, he's the teacher, he's the rabbi. And that back in Jewish culture, that's what people would do. In, in Western Christianity, sometimes I call myself a Christian, but I really don't follow Jesus. I might come to church every now and again, I kind of believe in God, but I'm kind of doing my own thing. Vastly different than having a rabbi as your master and, and following in his footsteps. 
like he's walking in dust. Everybody watching Chosen right now, by the way? If you haven't watched Chosen, it's crazy. Like what we're teaching out of Luke is being portrayed on the big screen with the Chosen. So crazy. They, they leave all to follow Jesus. But these three things that he talks about when you follow the master that are powerful, be with Jesus, become like Jesus, and then do as he does. So here, here's the beauty of it. I can take the pressure off as a dad because if I just apprentice under Jesus and I'm following him, I'm with him, I start becoming more like him, I become, I, I just start doing what he does, and guess, guess who's also behind me? It's like, you ever see the ducks in a row? And then, whack, 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 yeah, there you go. Is that you, Justin? That's good, that's good, okay. No, I like it. So, do you see the picture? So. It takes the pressure off me, if I'm honest, because some of us are like, dude, I never had a dad to give me an example of what that looks like. Can I set you free? You don't need one. You need the ultimate father. You need to follow Jesus, apprentice under Jesus, and now your little ducklings behind you, they're like, oh, that's how we do it. Oh, that's how we're humble. Oh, that's how we're generous. That's how we're gracious. So good. Matthew 4.19 says, <laughs> uh, Jesus says this, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. Men, as our kids follow us, what are we making them? Follow me, and I will make you. Follow me, and I will make you. Example, all right, number two, encourage. Everybody say encourage. encourage. Ephesians 6, 4. Let's start just with the first part of it. Fathers, everybody say fathers. Fathers, do not provoke your children to anger by the way you treat them. Okay, just start, just stop there. Dad's in the left section. How are you treating your kids? Moms, don't, don't go to sleep, because y'all are part of this too. By the way, let me just take a 30 second and look at all you moms and go, thank you for being such loving, supportive wives. We would not be the dads that we are today without who you are. Someone who doesn't try to just usurp authority, but you're supporting, you're encouraging, you're Jesus-led, man. I, I, I would not be the man, the dad I am, without my wife, so we honor you. How are we treating our kids? Listen, let me ask you, are they encouraged or are they discouraged? Let me just pause. Men, I know life gets stressful. I know you carry a lot. I know there's things that you're trying to figure out. I know there's questions you ask God, how do we get in this predicament? But somehow, some way, we need the grace of God to carry us through those stressful seasons so it doesn't transfer into our kids. Colossians 3.21 says, fathers, everybody say fathers. Do not aggravate your children or they will become discouraged. I'll, I'll give you just a couple of quick tips practically. You guys ready for them? First row is, what about my back row? Y'all ready? Y'all ready? Um, here's what I would say. One of the things I try to encourage myself, one, one of the commitments I asked God to give me grace was with tone of voice. And this might be overlooked, but I try to train, especially our pastors and some of our leaders in the same way. Tone of voice is, more than, is bigger than you think. So when you give instruction, I know maybe you, it hasn't been modeled great in your life at times, and, but I, I say that's no excuse. The tone of voice when you give instructions. So here, here's the framework, ready? Clear and kind. Clear and kind. I just saw this modeled recently. We had the privilege of uh, being with a couple of the pastors and uh, I was watching them as they were giving instructions to their kids. And I'm a weirdo, I know, but I use please and thank you all the time. It's a non-negotiable in our family, at our church, in our ministry. It's just, I'm sorry. And um, <laughs> so we were all staying together at this house, having a good time. And the kids, they're kids. So they'd walk out to the pool area and they'd leave the door open. And I just watched them. 
see if, man, the instruction's working at all, if anything's sticking at all. And uh, one by one, I saw these pastors, they'd say the name of their kid. Hey, could you please uh, shut the door, please? Thank you. Great job. You're the man. Good job. And you'd think they'd only hear it once, and then every time after they went, they would close the door. I mean, five minutes later, little Roycey, he'd come. And I'd just look at Roy. Every time I look at Royce, I'm just laughing. That's, that's Mike and Jay's little guy. And uh, he comes bailing out. <laughs> he literally does that. It's hilarious. And uh, I see Pastor Mike. Big Roycey boy. Hey, would you mind please shutting that door? Hey, thanks so much. You're the man, bud. Listen. That's vastly different than, Royce, shut the door. How many times are I gonna tell you? I came to break some generational curses today because some of you, that's how you grew up. You don't have to do that anymore. You can go, God, I need your grace. I need your grace. I, need, I wanna be kind. I wanna be clear. It's, listen, don't hear, oh, just let your kids do whatever. No, 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 quite the opposite, actually but do it with, with kindness and humility. Ephesians 6, 4, the second part says, rather, okay, so don't, don't aggravate them, rather bring them up. And, and when I was studying this, that phrase, bring them up, underline that, and I'm gonna get back to it. Bring them up with discipline and instruction that comes from the Lord. It's cool, when the Lord gives you instruction, he's gonna give you clear and kind. Now, if you don't obey, there might be some consequences, but he's gonna be clear and kind. Bring them up. And I was studying that word for bring them up. It's uh, in the Greek, it's extrepo. And, and listen to what it means. It means to nourish up to maturity. Wow. Oh, to nourish up. And I was thinking, dads, oh, dads, listen, listen. Are we strengthening our kids? Oh, are we starving our kids? The nourishment from the Lord, as you're nourished in the word of God, that's why we call them daily self-feeders. We get the sustenance of our heavenly father and now it's flowing through us into our kids and they're not starving, looking on Instagram and TikTok and, and what all the other ones and they're finding their identity and all that. Listen, okay, how about we just give them the word and now they're not starving anymore, they're sustained. And what happens? Oh golly, I'm getting stoked and I need to relax, I'm so sorry. Tell, your, tell your, uh, the friends you brought to church, say, he's not always this way. He gets a little amps. Okay, real quick. Dads, in my experience, if you learn this one phrase for your boys, it will help you. Ready? I believe in you. Jeff, you have what it takes. I believe in you. I'm proud of you, man. Dads with daughters, you're beautiful. You're beautiful inside out. It's not what the culture says, you're beautiful. You're more than enough. If, 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 if it's genuine from heaven through my heart to my boys, I believe in you. I'm encouraging them. To my daughters, you're beautiful. In every way, you're beautiful. I, I'm, I could brag on our, my, my daughter-in-law and my future daughter-in-law all day long. We've been praying for them since, since <laughs> our kids were toddlers. And to see God provide such beautiful daughters. It's powerful. Encouragement. And then you go into your older years. Uh, I would challenge some of you empty nesters. Where are my empty nesters at? I, like, I, I get y'all. Y'all are gonna turn that, that music on and cry. I promise you, you will. Um, every Friday, I meet with Zion for lunch. And my goal, you know what my goal is? Encourage. Now, most often, he's counseling me like on major life decisions. If I'm really honest, I'll be like, Zion, I need wisdom. He's like, hold on. <laughs> Thus saith the Lord. Like, <laughs> and we add, eat a burger and an omelet. And, uh, but my one goal is to what? Is to encourage. To, uh, when Blaze was in college, he just graduated. I'm so proud of him, by the way. I'm so proud of my boys. I'm sorry. 
I know I talk about it too much, but I'm just being honest, man. I'm super proud of my kids. Super proud of my kids. I really am. And um, every, every uh, Wednesday night when the church was being built, I would drive up to the parking lot and uh, I would just call him Wednesday at 8 p.m. every Wednesday and ask him three questions. And the whole goal was to encourage him. And again, I don't want you to hear, oh, Todd, you think you're awesome and you got parenting. And No, please don't hear that. All I'm trying to do is help you. A couple things that I've learned by God's grace. They need encouragement. They're already discouraged enough. One of my father figures was my high school coach, <laughs> Coach Petito, who just retired after like 80 years of like, like coaching, I'm telling you. And uh, he looks just the same. He looked at me one day after uh, we were playing basketball in the gym my sophomore year, looked me square in the eye, said, Todd, you're gonna play on Sundays someday. You talk about encouragement. That father figure looked me dead in the eyes and spoke destiny into my life. Dads, what you say does matter. I mentioned that, didn't I? So your words do matter. Your actions more, but what you say matters. Finally, number three, empower. And I wish I had more time, but let me just give you a couple, couple quick thoughts. Um, I'll start with a verse, 2 Timothy 2.2. 2. And y'all, y'all pastors on the front row, you guys know the things you've heard from me among many witnesses. Commit these to faithful men who will be able to teach others also. Your goal is to what? To train and then kick out. <laughs> like to train them and then turn them loose. And I would even say, I, as I was studying for this, men, you can write this down. Train and then trust. Train and then trust. I, there was a phrase that I would tell my kids as they got older, I said to them, we did, my wife and I, we trust you and we believe in you. And you're gonna have freedom in this house. By God's grace, we've worked hard to set a pattern to follow Jesus, but we wanna give you freedom. And you'll continue to have that freedom unless you give me a reason not to trust you. But I trust you. We led with trust. Now, by God's grace, they had freedom. When they got to high school, they didn't have a curfew. You're like, you still my pastor? I don't know about that. I'm like, freedom. I really think some of us as dads spend, if we can spend more time training, but then trusting and setting them up, I think it could change. The four steps in parenting, caretaker, you toddlers, y'all get after it. Number two is commando, give them direction. You gotta train them, get them direction. Three is coach, and number four is consultant. And I would say as an empty nester, an invited consultant. I'm, I'm learning this as I go. I'll try to say to my boys, hey, I'm here always. I wanna be an invited consultant into your life if you want me, but I'm not gonna be over, like, like hovering over you telling you what to do. There's a process that happens, but we train and then we trust, we, we develop and then we, we, we turn them loose. And by the way, this can start early. <laughs> oh golly, there's so much. We just need to do a parenting class or maybe like a, like a call-in show where you ask questions or something because I, I, I could go on and on about this and I love it. Um, let me just give you a final two things and then we'll, we'll wrap, okay? You guys still with me? Everybody good? Okay. So, so it, can start, it can start young. Let your kids pick up after themselves. Train them how to do it, what the expectation is, and then let them pick up their toys before dinner. You, men, you could say something like this. Guys, Man, awesome that God provided us this toy, these toys. This has been so fun. Your mom's been preparing an amazing meal by God's grace. We love how she serves us so well. So let's go ahead and be good stewards and clean up the toys and put them away and let's report back to the dinner table. I'm gonna give you five minutes. Let's do it, please. Let's go. That's it. And then let them do it. If they don't, remember, let's go to the power of choice. 
you have the choice. You can either do that or you can choose discipline. It's up to you. I, one of my father figures was Kevin Swain, and uh, he had a three-year-old daughter. I'd never talk about the power of a model, a template. And he gave that instruction one time. And he said, Hannah, um, I want you to do this. It's up to you. This is your choice. You can, choose, you can choose obedience or discipline. It's up to you. Gave her the power of choice at three. I was like, this guy lost his mind. She ain't never gonna do anything. Like, what is she talking about? And the girl did it. I was like, what? He's like, yeah, I got this, I got this wood cheese cutting board is my rod of discipline. And she's choosing that or she's choosing obedience. It's up to her. I was like, oh, you saved me yelling, raise my voice, anger just is gone. Give that power of choice to your kids. Give them choice and train them early. One of our little granddaughters, I call her granddaughters, but pseudo granddaughters, we were watching her brothers play baseball and uh, there was a, there was a uh, rapper that she dropped. And so I noticed it and I said, oh, hey baby, can you please pick that up? Hey, I took her by the hand, I'm like, hey, let's go ahead and put that in the trash. Ready? And make it fun. Don't be like, pick up the darn trash, man. Great job, excellent, that's a way to be a good steward. Yeah, high five. What are you doing? You're, you're training, someone say training. training. Training, okay. Last thing, this is very practical. Um, our boys, uh, well Zion, after, this is how it works, okay? Empowering your kids, because it will happen. By the way, time, time goes by fast. Ben, you send in your second one, it's crazy. My, my son Zion went down to Grand Canyon University for his freshman year of college, met the wife or the girl of his dreams, gets married, the whole deal. But anyway, after his, his freshman year, he has an internship in Southern California at this huge apartment complex, luxury apartment complex. And after the internship, he, he gets offered the full-time job. And you're as a dad are like, okay, you went to college, bro. Like, don't you have three more years, you know? And he calls me and he says, he says, hey, dad, I just got offered this full-time job out here. It's a great opportunity. What do you think? Number one, thanks Zion for allowing me to be an invited consultant into your life. But I said, you know what, Zion? And right away the Holy Spirit says, empower him. I said, by God's grace, we've tried to do our best to set a pattern to follow Christ and follow the truth. I trust you. And whatever you decide, I got your back. Now, in the back of my mind, if I'm really honest, I'm like, bro, you got three, three, four, I mean, <laughs> we sent you three. I'm just being, can I be honest at church? But, but, but at the end of the day, but I said, you know what? God, you got it. They're your kids. And I just wanna steward them well. Back to you. And I can't tell you what he's doing now. It is, blows my mind. At 19, he's overseeing these three, I, I could go on and on. I, you don't want me to brag about my kid, but I'm just gonna tell you, empower your kids. Be an example, encourage them, but then empower them. Don't enable them, empower them. Amen? Amen. God, thanks for this word and, and this church. What a, I'm just blown away by what we get to do. Love you with all of our hearts. Try to help as many people as we can in our sphere of influences, and specifically today, Thank you for being the ultimate heavenly father, the ultimate template, the ultimate pattern, the ultimate example. And it's only by your grace that you give us by the power of your spirit that we could do anything great for our kids. So I, that's what I really pray for us as a church. Fill us with your Holy Spirit. Keep us close in your word that is the game plan of life so we can give it away to our kids, set them up for success, but ultimately entrust them to you for your glory in Jesus' name.